ClickUp, Asana, and Trello, oh my. If you've been around my channel, you know I'm biased when it comes to ClickUp, but I spent hours and hours and hours before I made this decision. So today, again, I wanna show you why ClickUp still is the better choice for you rather than settling for Trello or dealing with Asana. everybody, I'm Yvonne with AskEvie.com and I am a business efficiency consultant for digital entrepreneurs. And if you're ready to streamline your business, to skyrocket your sales, you better make sure to hit that subscribe button to make that happen. And don't forget to hit the bell to get notified every time I upload a new video. Now, the questions have been rolling in and literally just an hour ago, I got asked again, why should I leave Trello for ClickUp? Hmm, I could say because I told you so, which ask my video guy and ask my IT guy and a couple other people usually comes around sooner or later because I spent hours and hours and hours trying to figure out tools, learning tools, testing tools and doing all the things before I tell you, yes, this is the right tool for you. But Considering you might probably just have stumbled over this video on YouTube, you don't know me yet, and you don't know that I'm always right, right? Rule number one, I'm always right. Rule number two, if I'm not right, just automatically refer to rule number one. All joking aside, I wanted to take some time today to really deep dive into what led me to these decisions, what even in a past conversation that just happened a couple of weeks ago with Steve Dodo, again, reiterated why I'm sticking with ClickUp and why I'm using it and share it with you. And then just go take that information and build your own opinion. You don't just need to trust me. You need to just figure it out for yourself. But I'm gonna make that part easy. One of the first things that often get thrown at me from Trello users is, yeah, but I like the look, I like the box, I like the image on top, I like all the things. We can do that. I'll show you in just a second. Let's start initially with Trello is a nice tool to start in the beginning to really get into project management and get your feet wet. But I'm sorry, especially after they pulled in Butler internally, it's been a mess over there. And except for customer support, you know, roadmaps for tools when, hey, we would like this feature or that feature, that's about the only use that does not look small or unprofessional to me in Trello. I'm sorry, Trello to me is not a full-fledged project management system. It is great to start. It is great to try and get your feet wet. I'm not taking anything away from using Trello, but the moment you want to scale, the moment you want to get serious about the business, the moment you really want to automate and scale your business, you are gonna run out of usage in Trello so fast and run into boundaries and impossible things from the beginning. Okay, my rant is over now. If you've been around, you know I don't think a lot of Trello. It has its place and its use, but we are here to scale. We are here to skyrocket your sales. We are here to automate your business. Trello lost its name in the game on that one. Rant end. Let's finally dive into all of the things that you actually care about and how this is possible. So for my Trello users out there that are considering moving away from Trello, look at my screen, looks familiar. You've seen that before? Exactly. This is a project I'm working on right now, a speaker workflow with some great tasks and all of that in there from my speaker coach. But I'm working really hard on making this so much more usable. Right now, it's just those boxes and you're going through when it is like Trello. You can look at it the same way you can look at it in Trello. Not practical, not scalable, not a good solution, but here it is for you Trello users, you can make it look like that. 
and I just used how much of your time just to get to this point. Yes, once in a while I lose track and I get on a rant. This is just what happens. Now let's get into all of the technical stuff. One of the major things I have gotten, and that was the conversation with Steve Toto, which is a big, big downfall with Asana, is due date remapping. I cannot believe they don't have that. So what I'm talking about when I say due date remap, Often enough, we have big tasks that have subtasks underneath. For example, you have your content schedule and you start with a YouTube video, you make it in a blog post, you do the marketing. So you have video XYZ, which then has the video edit underneath, which then has the blog underneath, which then has the marketing underneath. Those are subtasks. Now, when subtasks are related to main tasks and you are changing any of those dates, you want that to potentially and probably most of the time reflect on the other tasks. So let's dive into one of those tasks and see what happens. So on ClickUp, as you can see, I have a main task due date June 19th, the blog post due May 21st, and the marketing May 16th. Those days are completely off. This is a whole nother video that will be coming up and you will be getting this template. But on those subtasks, due date remapping. Let's change this date to June 24th. Let's see what's gonna happen. <gasps> Look at that. Should we change subtask dates also? Nope, just the main task changed. I don't wanna do anything with this, it's all fine. No, actually, you know, because this is a full on workflow that is relevant between each task and for each task. Yes, I wanna change those subtask dates. And there we go. In the same relationship as those dates were before they changed. So if the blog post is due five days before the main task and you change the due date of the main task, those five days stay the same and it adjusts accordingly. Genius. Now, actually a pretty common use since, and I use this specific feature daily. It's a must have for content creation. One of the biggest things for me is I can change the views as I want to in whatever way, shape or form. You've seen that you can set your board up just like in Trello, which I find not really effective, but that's a whole nother story. You can do it, it's there. As you can see right here, I have a collection of information in my marketing space. This is all of my blog content, video that needs to be added, video that needs to be recorded. I have sorted those by the stage my content is in meaning need to record the videos and get that ready for my video guy, need to edit the video, that's the video guy, needs to get on the blog, that's my VA, needs to be marketed, that's my VA too, and all of those things in those stages. Now, not everybody likes this list view. I just wanna know what the heck I need to do. Okay, I would just wanna know the status, and the status is we need to do a shit ton of work. Not much is in process right now because I literally just built and cleaned up the space a couple of days ago. There's one waiting for me to be proved and one is already completed. Now this is everything in my marketing space. I don't necessarily want all of this because I don't care. I don't want to get overwhelmed. There's way too much happening here and I feel like I'm way behind of work. Let's just look at YouTube. Let's start there. I can do that. I also can just sort by assignee. I can drill down on information. I can look at the big picture. I can move so many things around however I want to, not just by status, not just by assignee. I can sort these by custom fields. If I go into a task, it's easier to show what I mean by custom fields. I have custom fields in here that allow me to choose a stage, which record, edit, YouTube blog, social media, and there should be an evergreen, will be coming. I can sort my list by those stages. I can sort my list by brain power, low, medium, high, or camera ready. Meaning assigning those brain power custom fields to your task allows you of, oh my God, the kids just had lunch, the house is crazy. I lost my brain about three hours ago and I need a coffee IV. You sort your task by low brain power and you can still just crank it out because you don't have to think about those tasks. Imagine how much that's gonna up your productivity. Another major advantage of ClickUp is 
embedding other tools. If you have seen one of my videos where I talk about my workflow when it comes to social media scheduling and content generation, you've seen one of these before, and that is my Airtable embed. On content generation, we write the posts in an Airtable base per year, month on top, because that allows me to download a CSV file for each month, bulk upload that to a Go Upholds and just be done with the scheduling. No hours of a post here and a post there and have to worry about anything. Bulk scheduling is a time saver and a lifesaver. But I don't necessarily want to have to switch in between tools for and back and blah. No, you just grab your embed code from Airtable. If you want to edit it in here, you need to be on the paid account, full disclosure. But it allows me to monitor, is my VA done? Do we need to do anything else? What's happening? And even more fun, if you are lucky and your social media scheduling tool allows you to embed it, like mine does, a go up holds, you can embed that straight up in here in ClickUp and you don't even have to go anywhere else. Look at this. I can embed a go up hold right in here. I can go into my publishing calendar and see what's happening. Is everything going out? Is everything going smooth? Do I need to do anything? I can pull up my reports and everything straight up and click up because they allow us to embed things as long as your tool or your site allows that embed. We can do embeds in here either by a URL, which is what I've done with a go up hold or per a HTML, which is what I have done for Airtable. You can pull in Google Documents right away. You can even import SoundCloud. Crazy. Huge time saver and huge feature, which is great for your productivity yet again. We all like to be efficient, right? How much time are we saving just by clicking for and back and up and down and left and right? Don't want to do that. Last but not least, the most fun and most nerdy reason why I love ClickUp, dashboards. And not just any dashboards. I'm like, we have the box view. You're not gonna see much on my box view right now. I don't think so, because I've been cleaning up. But the box view in ClickUp allows you to keep track of who's doing their job, who has too much work, who doesn't have enough work, what's overdue, and all of those things. It gives you an overview of all of the things going on and what's happening in your team. Oh, cool, we have those dashboards in a lot of other tools. But here is where it gets fancy. Let's go into my dashboard. And this is pretty much one of the fairly simple dashboards, actually, where I have built different task lists and I just embedded those widgets to easily be able to see what's due today, what's on backlog, what's due tomorrow, what's due this week. And I built these dashboards, not just for me, but also for my team or for clients so they don't have to look at everything. They easily can look at a box and say, this is what's due tomorrow. There's my training. There's what's backlog. We really need to focus on that one and get that done. And they don't have to look at anything else. Either way, my project manager or I assign everything, get the due dates in there and just get things done. No need for the team to get all overwhelmed, but you can take that to another level. And if you've been around, you must have heard ClickUp in real life by now because I've been talking about it now for a while. And Anne has taken dashboards to a whole new level. We've been searching for a CRM that works for us for a while now. And they either were ridiculously priced or they just don't do the job. So Anne took the time and dove into ClickUp dashboards. Looking at Anne's conversion tracking dashboard, she has pulled in from her headquarters space where she tracks client in their stages from a coffee chat to a rescue call to monthly clients and all those things. She will be talking on that on her channel. So once you are done here and you subscribe to my channel, you make sure to head over there because I know she has a dashboard video coming up. I'm not going to dive into that. You can watch her video when that's coming out. But to show you this is possible in ClickUp. This dashboard tracks when things move from one status to another status. Where did they come from? Is word of mouth, Facebook, is it a referral? What's the lead time? This is a new feature that ClickUp just rolled out. So we are just testing this and what's the best usage of this one. But you easily can tell in this testing space, we got total leads this month, leads for the previous month, 
what's the conversion, what's the conversion by previous month. And you can see things without paying 400 bucks for a CRM tool. Don't get me wrong, there are CRM tools with way more features. But if you're starting out, this is a perfect use of ClickUp, building your little CRM, taking note of clients, which stages they're in, when do you have to follow up with them and see what's happening. Okay. I can now get back off my rent. If you have made it this far into the video, I know you are really committed to finding a project management system that fits you. Awesome. Talk about determination. I'm proud of you. I'm doing the same thing. So go back through the use case scenarios, look at everything. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell. You know that one. And last but not least, if you have open questions, if you have a use case scenario that you are trying to figure out and I didn't answer, comment below and I'm more than happy to help you.